at a, a kind of a, a base level, what is going on in the brain? Like, how is DMT perhaps mechanistically acting on structures within the brain? Like, what is going on there? Well, that's yeah, it's a it's a it's a big question. Um, but I'll give you the elevator pitch, so to speak. So, so your world that you experience all the time is constructed from neural information. It's a model. It's a model of the environment. You never experience the world as it is, right? Uh, or the world out there, the world that you are experiencing all the time is constructed as a pattern of neural activity, a unified integrated pattern of neural information being generated by this outer layer of your brain called your cortex. And it's mapped to information from the environment. So your brain is constantly receiving information from the environment, sensory information uh, from the eyes, the ears, etc., um, And using that to kind of inform and modulate and test its model. But it's always the model that you're experiencing. Um, and that applies whether you're awake, uh, whether you are dreaming, for example, your brain is constructing a model in a very similar way when you're dreaming. Uh, and indeed, uh, when a psychedelic drug enters the brain. So what psychedelic drugs are doing is they're stimulating certain receptors in um, on certain populations of neurons. So neurons are these basic information generating cells in your cortex. They generate information, they share information. And it's these patterns of information generated and shared by neurons that, is, that, is, that manifests subjectively as your experienced world. And what psychedelics do is when they bind to specific receptor types, so these for the technical people, these are serotonin 5-HT2A receptors specifically, but other serotonin receptors are also involved, certainly. Um, what they when these receptors are activated by the psychedelic, they, they tend to excite these neurons, they stimulate these neurons, they make them more likely to generate information and more likely to share information. Um, and so what this does is at a low dose, at least, is it kind of shakes up this world model. Uh, it, 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 um, it makes the world model much more fluid and dynamic because more information is being generated and information is flowing much more freely because these neurons are much more excited. They're much, much more easily excited by other neurons. It's, e more, it's easier for information to flow through the cortex. So that is experienced as um, a, a change in the, the structure and the dynamics of your world. The world shifts from being this very stable, predictable world model uh, to being much more fluid and dynamic and much more sensitive actually to incoming information as well. So colors become brighter, uh, the identity of objects shift before the eyes, everything becomes much more fluid. Now, when you throw in something like DMT, when you up the dose a lot to a lot higher, you get this kind of phase transition effect where the world model actually uh, which normally kind of emerges from this cortical activity, um, suddenly transitions into an entirely new pattern of activity, which represents um, this alternate pattern of neural information, which represents uh, an entirely new world model, um, which is this world, this strange DMT world. Now, why does DMT cause the brain to construct this entirely different model of reality? That is actually very much an open question. Um, the DMT world is not some chaotic maelstrom uh, of random activity. It is a, uh, a world of, of, of crystalline clarity, hyper complex, uh, very distinct, and yet bearing no relationship whatsoever to the normal waking world. So that's another huge question that I I talk about and I write about and I think about and try to get to grips with is why the brain is able to construct this alternate world model. That makes sense.